Hi, I'm Chef Maya Camille with Justice of the Pies. And this video is sponsored by Wilton. So whether you're looking to refresh your bakeware or maybe discover some new tools to use, or maybe you just need sprinkles for your cupcakes, Wilton has everything that you need to create new baking memories and warm traditions for the fall. And one of my favorite fall pies is an apple cranberry pie. Mm, and that is what we're going to make right now. The first thing I need you to do is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Next, we are going to need six Granny Smith apples. Now, I love to use Granny Smith apples when making apple pies because these apples are nice, firm, and tart. The tartness of this apple is going to pair really nicely with the sweetness of the sugar. So we're going to take these apples and we're going to peel, core and slice these apples. And it's going to give us about four to four and a half cups of apples for our pie. Now that I have all of my apple slices cut, I'm going to take four tablespoons of unsalted butter and I am going to put it in a large heavy bottom pot and turn the heat on to medium high. Now, Wilton's has these large nesting bowls with lids on it, and I absolutely love it because it allows me to pre-measure my ingredients before I start cooking, and then put a lid on it to protect it. So in this bowl, I have light brown sugar, and by putting a lid on it, I'm able to keep the sugar nice and soft without allowing it to dry out due to oxidation. So in this bowl, I have one cup of light brown sugar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my apple slices and put it inside the bowl. And then in another small nesting bowl, I have one half cup of granulated sugar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and toss that into my big bowl. And then I also have smaller nesting bowls that are great because they're flexible and they're made of silicone. So in this bowl, I have one fourth cup of all-purpose unbleached flour. Let's go ahead and throw that in. And then I also have one and a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon and one half teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Go ahead and pour that in. Now here's the wonderful thing. I could just simply put this lid back onto my bowl and then shake it up. So I'm able to get all of the ingredients well incorporated. Perfect. So now that all of the ingredients are incorporated, I'm going to go ahead and put this into my pot so that the butter can macerate with the flour and the sugar. Once the apples have macerated with the flour, the sugar and the butter, and the slices have become pork tender, we're going to take our silicone spatula, which I love because it's heat resistant, and we're going to fold in one cup of cranberry sauce that has whole berries in it. Mmm, smells so good. Okay, so while the apple filling cools down a bit, we're gonna go ahead and roll out our disc of crust so that we can line our pie pan. Now, I've made crust earlier and I wrapped it in saran wrap and popped it in the fridge so that it can chill. If you don't want to make your own crust, store bark crust is perfectly fine. I would suggest that you get about four rolls of crust. Now, this is a part that I love to do. We're gonna throw some flour onto our countertop. This is fun. Now, what I love about this rolling pin is it's nice, long, sturdy. This is a good rolling pin to have for a professional baker like myself, but it's also perfect for the home baker as well. So we're going to take our pie crust and I'm just going to uh, put some flour on it and then flip it over so that I can have some flour on the top. And then we'll roll this out. 
And as you're rolling out crust, you want to make sure that you're continuously turning it so that you are creating a circle, not a rectangle. We don't want that. We want a circle. And also when you turn the crust, you're making sure that the crust is not going to stick to your surface, which will make it really hard to lift it up. If your crust is not a perfect circle, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine because we are actually going to cut away the scraps. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my crust and I'm going to roll it onto my rolling pin. And then I have a pie pan and I love this pie pan because it has extra handles on the side, which is perfect to pick up the pie pan without disturbing my crust. So we're going to take this pie pan and roll the crust let me see how I want to do this. There we go. Just go ahead and roll the crust onto the pie pan. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our fingers and we're going to press the pie crust into the bottom of the pie pan. Now I am going to take just a butter knife and I am going to trim away the extra crust but I want to keep it and I am going to show you why okay I'm going to set my pie plate aside for a second because I want to show you this this is a pie crust mold and it's so fun because you can create pretty shapes for the lip of your pie plate and so I have three different designs here which one should we do one two or three I think I'm going to go with two. So I'm going to take these scraps that I have and I'm just going to tear off a piece and I'm going to kind of pull it together and warm it up with my hands. And then I'm going to take my pie crust mold and my crust and I'm just simply going to push it into that mold. Push it in there really good. And then I will take it out. Look at that. Super cute, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some egg yolk that I've got in my silicone bowl. It's actually an egg wash, which is one egg with one tablespoon of water. And I'm just going to lightly put some egg wash onto the edge of the pie crust with my fingers. And then I'll put my decorative trim on there. The egg wash helps to make the two pieces of crust stick together. All done and I think it is super cute. Look at that beautiful trim all around the perimeter of the pie crust. So I am going to put this in the fridge so that it can chill and set and then I'm going to roll out another disc or two of crust and we're going to use some cookie cutters. Not cookie cutters, crust cutters. We're going to use crust cutters to cut out some shades. Yay! I've got the second disc of pie crust rolled out and now this is a little trick that I like to do when I am using cookie cutters or again as I like to call them pie crust cutters. I always dip my cutters into flour before I cut out a new shape because it helps to allow the dough to come off of the cutter more easily. So I cut, dip, and cut. I've got all of my leaves cut out and now we're ready to compile the pie, the apple cranberry pie. Now I've got a baking sheet that I love because it's a cookie sheet but it's also deep enough to make brownies or crispy treats in it and so I'm going to place my pie dough, my pie plate onto this baking sheet and then I am going to fill it with my apple cranberry filling. Yummy. And then before I add another layer, I want to give my crust 
a nice egg wash using my silicone pastry brush. And now I'm going to give the pie one last good egg wash. Perfect. So I am going to pop this in the oven at 350 degrees for 35 to 45 minutes. I just took the apple cranberry pie out of the oven and it is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. It's so pretty. Now, I didn't need to use it this time, but if you find that your pie crust is browning a little bit more quickly than you anticipated, then you can always use a silicone pie shield. What I love about this pie crust shield is that it's adjustable. So whether your pie plate is 8, 9, or 10 inches, you can adjust the shield so that it can fit and cover your pie crust. Now I'm about to go dig into this pie, but you can check out all of the baking tools that I used by visiting Wilton.com. Bye.